Hello, my name is Simon and I present The World Painter River Script. If you've ever tried to make rivers in World Painter, you might have found it quite challenging. Either the water goes everywhere, the rivers tend to flow uphill sometimes, or they just don't follow the terrain properly. It would be really convenient if we had some sort of tool where we could say, well, let's have, let's say, 20 rivers where the terrain is sand and then if that would magically just work as you can see here it actually did work it has made some nice rivers that actually flow with the terrain from a higher point and they will actually make nice channels into the terrain if the river needs to uh, go up a bit they flow nicely towards the ocean and they do about what you would expect it doesn't only do random starting positions if you make a layer you can also paint individual pixels for where you want your rivers to start and if we give that to the script in our case, the layer is named start. And we run that. What we will see is that it will make the rivers precisely at the starting points that we have specified. Before going into detail, let's first look at what the river script is actually really good at. It is really good at making sure that the rivers actually flow nicely down the terrain. And it really tries to find the best route towards the ocean. That also means that if you change your terrain, the river will move. So you have a lot of control over the shape of your river by simply changing the terrain. Another advantage is that it will automatically allow you to place uh, the ground material, such as sand in this case. And it will also even do the biomes automatically. Another nice thing is that if the river ever comes to a point where it does need to go up a hill to get to the ocean, it will actually carve itself a nice channel. It is also important to look at what the river script is not so good at. To illustrate that I will fly over some very extreme terrain, and that is exactly where the river script tends to struggle. Uh, terrain that is not natural is either really flat or doesn't have a lot of noise on it or is really steep. That's where the rivers tend to be very straight and very jagged and can result in some weird artifacting. Uh, it mostly works well in very natural terrain. If your terrain is very straight or very flat, it doesn't work that well uh, there. Okay, before we get into the tutorial part of this video, let's do a quick overview of all the things that you can configure about the river script. I'd like to note as well that there must be water on the map. Water is what the rivers will flow towards. If there's no water on the map, it simply won't work. The first configuration is the start position. So you can make a layer, paint individual pixels, and that would be the start of the layer. You can just type in the name of the layer here. So in this case, we have start. We have random positions, uh, in case you don't care where the river starts, you can say like give me let's say 20 uh, different starting positions and it will make uh, 20 different rivers. We have the width at the source and the ocean, that is basically how wide the river is, so it starts at a width of 3 and then slowly goes to a width of 10. Uh, rivers only flow down, make sure that the river always uh, flows down and never flows uphill. That's nice if you want to take a boat and go all the way to the ocean. Uh, if it ever does need to go uphill, it will instead dig a little channel so the river doesn't have to go uphill. Uh, the river depth is basically how deep the river is, which depends on the width. So the wider the river, the deeper the river will be. The random will add some noise to the pathfinding, so the river will become more squiggly uh, if you increase this. By lava mode will simply, instead of placing water, it will place lava, which is nice for volcanoes. And the minimum length is a filter that makes sure that all the rivers that are generated are at least 100 blocks long in this case, and you, of course you can change that. 
And that's especially nice if you're working with random ones. You can also type help in here and click run and you get some extra configurations such as changing the terrain that is what we use to make sure that it has sand and you can also add custom layers and there's some other advanced options in here which I won't go over now. You can get the script from my Gumroad page. Uh, it does cost 20 bucks uh, however I do find it important that everyone should have access to this script so if you don't have an income or you can't pay or you have a good reason why you shouldn't be able to afford this reasonably then you can contact me on discord and we'll work out something uh to get it it's, it's really simple you just enter the price that you want to pay so like 20 you add it to the card you go through the process and it should uh, allow you to download a zip file with the uh, script included Before we actually run the script, let's uh, define some starting positions. To do that, I recommend to make a new custom ground cover layer since we don't need to change any of these settings. Uh, what we do need to do is uh, set a reasonable name. I like to use the name start, but you can use whatever you want as long as there's no other layer with the same name. Uh, and then, then what you do is you just click the pencil tool and you can zoom in wherever you want your river to start and make sure that you paint just a single pixel and not more. Uh, and then you can uh, put multiple starting locations wherever you want them and that's where the rivers will start. Now to actually run the script we go to tools run script if you don't have the script already open, you can click on the three dots and go to the .js file. Or you can click it in the list if you've run it before. Then uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, just give in the start layer that we just made. Uh, we could have also used some random locations. In that case, you don't have to make this start layer. And of course, after you are done running the script, you can remove that again. I like the default settings uh, best. That's why they are, they are the default. And what I do like to do is make sure that the terrain is sand. So to do that, you just put in the word terrain, followed by whatever block you want. Uh, let's try gravel this time. By the way, if you do this a lot, uh, you can also be lazy and just only type the T of the word terrain. And that's a little shortcut. Then you can click run and it will go through all the stuff. And as you can see, yes, it has generated the rivers from the starting positions that we specified. And if I zoom in, I can see, oh yes, it added a nice bit of gravel to my rivers. If you're not happy with the shape of the rivers, there's a few ways we can change this. For example, let's look at this river. Maybe we would like to have that go down instead and join the ocean here instead of going to the right. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to make sure we change the terrain. So the first thing we will do is we will undo the rivers that we've made and we will just make sure that we increase this area a bit and maybe lower this a bit. Now, when the water flows down, it's much more likely to actually go down here. Another thing we can do, uh, if we actually go to the script, is we can change the start and end width of the river. Let's say we want our rivers to be a lot bigger. We can, for example, make them have a width of 30 at the end. When we run it now, You can see, hey, now this river indeed goes down because we made it uh, go down. And you can see the rivers are much wider. Now let's have a look at what this rivers only flow down checkbox does. Uh, the best way to do this is to look at it in game. So when you leave this on, what will happen is as soon as a river flows down a mountain, and it would have to go up a hill again. Instead, it will, as you can see, carve out its own channel. 
The nice thing about it is it makes sure that if you see the water change height, it will always change height towards the river. So if you were to take a boat, you can flow down the entire thing and you will end up in the ocean. In contrast, if we look uh, at what would happen if we disable this, then the river will not carve this channel, but instead it will flow upwards. So as you can see, we're currently moving towards the river, but basically the direction of flow of the river is in the reverse of what you would expect it. Let's look at what this minimum length setting does. If we set this to zero and generate 50 random rivers, What you will see is that we get some of these really, really short rivers. Uh, if you don't like this, you can use the minimum length setting. Uh, let's set it to 200 as an example, and then get to 50 plantations. You can see that you only get long rivers, and you do not actually get any short rivers. Uh, how this works, it will filter out rivers, so that does mean that all the short rivers will simply be removed. So in total there might be fewer than the 50 random rivers that we decided, but we do know that they will all be shorter. So you might have to adjust the number of random rivers you want uh, to take account of some that will be removed by this minimum length. Let's have a look at this random setting. What this will do is it will basically nudge the river in random directions. So if we, for example, set this to 100 and we run the script, you can see that the rivers get really uh, quite wiggly and you can also get uh, these islands where here it, one river has been nudged to the left and one has been nudged to the right. There are some improvements that I have currently in the roadmap to f make this a bit better uh, and currently this also suffers from the problem that if you have really steep terrain and you make this values real high that the water has a tendency to sometimes escape and run down the mountain and create a whole lot of mess so use this with caution let's also have a look at uh, lava mode if you enable lava mode it will simply replace the rivers with lava. This is especially useful if you actually use it for a volcano. But let's have a look in game. As you can see, it creates a nice lava flow instead of water. Of course, it doesn't work uh, quite as well here. And you can see how it will like, connect to the ocean in this case. It will create a nice obsidian wall underneath after the water flow above. Uh, again, this works better with volcanoes. If you ever want to add a layer to your rivers, but you don't want to do that manually, uh, you can also do it automatically. For example, I have a river gold layer, so people can dig in my rivers for gold. Uh, all you have to do is in the same way we added the terrain for sand, you just add in layer and this again can also be shorted to just L, and then the name of the layer, in my case, River Gold. And if I now run this, you can see how the layer is applied to the entire river. Finally, in the advanced options, again, if you press help and uh, you run the script, you'll get this printed. There are two more settings. Uh, the first one I'd like to cover is the Max Origins. Uh, this is basically a safety measure that if you use a custom layer which has like thousands of pixels painted, because you might have misspelled the name, that the script wouldn't run for like seven days before it's finally done generating like a few million rivers. And we have a dike size, uh, which allows you to create little uh, hills on the side of your river like you can see here uh, this is mostly something that i use internally to make sure that the river doesn't go everywhere on really steep terrain uh, so consider this experimental and an advanced feature so uh, play with this at your own risk uh, it, it works best on bigger rivers 
But that about uh, wraps up my river script. If you have any uh, problems uh, that you would like help with, contact me on the Discord. The link will be in the description. And uh, have a great day and uh, have fun making rivers. <laughs>